from the desk of Ted Visner. I wanted to go over something here real quick. I got a letter from State of Michigan, Isabella County Trial Court, State of Michigan. Uh, dated July 14, 2015. I'll just read it quick in case you can't see it. Theodore Visner, 7287 West Fremont Road, Blanchard, Michigan, 49310. Uh, in re. Administrative Order 2008-2 and 2015-2. Dear Mr. Visner, please find the enclosed copy of Internal Policy 2008-2 as you requested. Neither 2008-2 nor 2015-2 require the approval of the State Court Administrative Office, SCAO. A list of local administrative orders that require approval by the SCAO is available by either contacting the SCAO or reviewing the list on their website. Okay, this was in response to a request that I made. Um, I wanted to see the Supreme Court authorization for um, Paul Chamberlain's policy law. Okay, and that's 2008-2 uh, and 2015-2. Okay, what uh, the Isabella County Trial Court Administrator in Isabella County is telling me is that there is a list of local administrative orders that require approval, which also might uh, seem to indicate there's a list of local administrative orders that don't require approval. Well, here's the thing. All administrative orders require approval before they can be enforced. Now, you can have administrative orders that are not approved by the Michigan Supreme Court, but they're not enforceable. So, basically what we have here is that we have, we do not have the Michigan Supreme Court or the State Court Administrator's Office approval for 2008-2 uh, and 2015-2. Okay, this is, this is key and critical right now because without the, the Supreme Court's authorization, these two rules uh, cannot be enforced. But here's the thing, they're already being enforced. 2008-2 um, uh, was uh, quoted to me as being the uh, reason for not uh, giving me the audio video transcripts of the 2000, uh, the February 10th, I'm sorry, the, <laughs> the Ju uh, July 10th proceedings to evict me here from my house. I requested the uh, audio video and that request was denied based on this administrative rule created by Paul Chamberlain, our chief judicial terrorist. Okay, now. <laughs> That was enforcement of 2008-2, okay? Denying my request for the audio-video transcripts created by the Isabella County Courts, uh, enforcing this rule, denying my request, is, is a violation, okay? This administrative rule is of no force and effect without the Supreme Court approval. And I'm gonna show you that here real quick. Okay, here it is right here. Uh, Michigan Court Rule 8.112, Local Court Rules Administrative Orders. Okay, now what we're talking about here is administrative orders and not local court rules. Local court rules uh, have this process here. We're under administrative orders, B right here. So B, three. Uh, before its effective date, an administrative order must be sent to the state court administrator. Okay, I'm not seeing here where it says some can be, some can't be. But the bottom line is, is that no administrative order is, is of any force and effect unless it has been submitted to the state court administrator for their approval. Okay, so Isabella County uh, Chief Judicial Terrorist Paul Chamberlain is creating administrative orders and not sending them off for approval and enforcing them anyways. Okay, that, I have a problem with that. I have a real problem with that, okay? Now, if you go further down, this is the annotated version of the Michigan Court Rules. Right here, it says, approval by the Michigan Supreme Court. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Schellender versus Schellender, 235 Mishap, 230. Uh, just get to the meat of it here. Circuit courts are permitted to adopt local court rules and administrative policies 
or administrative orders, but before enforcement, Supreme Court must first approve the rules and policies. Okay. Now this is in the notes section of MCR 8.112. So I had made this request for the Michigan Supreme Court authorization for these for these two rules, and this I'm going to read it one more time. Please find the enclosed copy of Internal Policy 2008-2, which is also an administrative order, as you requested. Neither 2008-2 nor 2015-2 require the approval of the State Court Administrative Office. That's total bullshit, okay? Unless, unless, unless these administrative orders are never to be used, then yeah, of course, the, the State Court Administrative office, Office's approval is not required. But that's the only case the State Court Administrative Office approval is not requir required. And again, a list of local administrative orders that require approval by the SCAO is available by either contacting the SCAO or reviewing the list on their website. Well, here's the thing. Um, administrative orders that are not approved by the SCAO are, are, of, are of no force and effect. Okay, Just because the SCAO has a list of uh, administrative orders that have been submitted for approval and, and, and everything else hasn't doesn't mean that they needed to be. So anyways, I wrote this letter. I'm trying to be nice, see, because I don't want I don't want people to think that I'm just anyways, tell me how this letter comes across. July twenty first, Carrie Curtis, she's the state she's the county and she's the court administrator, Isabella County Trial Court. Read, FOIA request for Michigan Supreme Court authorization of Administrative Order 2008-2 and Administrative Order 2015-2. Dear Carrie Curtis, I just received your letter dated June 14, 2015, and I am writing this letter in response to that letter with a brief statement regarding the information that you have provided me in hopes that we can clear a few things up. I requested the actual Michigan Supreme Court authorization of the judge-made policy law referenced above. I am not sure if you are aware of this or not, but before the county and its paid security force and local police can enforce these administrative orders, they need the approval of the Michigan Supreme Court as per the case law citations in the notes section of Michigan Court Rules Annotated 8.112. Michigan Court Rule 8.112 B3 states in part, before its effective date, meaning the administrative order, i.e. Administrative Order 2008-2 and Administrative Order 2015-2, an administrative order must be sent to the state court administrator. There's no exceptions here. It says shall. Anyways, I didn't, I'm going to continue reading. Your letter to me stated that neither 2008-2 nor 2015-2 require the approval of the state court administrative office, SCAO, and I'm not sure what this means to the people of Isabella County. This might perhaps be correct if the county never elected to enforce either of these administrative orders, but the county has been actively enforcing both. I hope for the county's sake that no one has been arrested for either of these unapproved administrative rules in Isabella County. Uh, you go on in your letter to state that some administrative orders require SCAO approval while others do not. I know that you know that I know that this is just a plain silly. But to keep things light, I will now ask you to produce the authority for this distinction. Tell me who gets to decide what administrative orders go to SCAO for approval and which do not. Please tell me that Chief Judge Paul Chamberlain gets to decide what goes out for approval prior to enforcement and what does not. This answer would absolve you completely from that conspiracy. So you know that conspiracy is a federal crime, and I would hate to see you wrapped up in all of that, trying to protect the criminal empire that has infested this county for decades. I have enclosed the pertinent parts of MCR 8.110, 8.112, and 8.115 for your convenience, but please feel free to reconcile with your own version of the Michigan court rules. Peace, love, and freedom, Ted Visner. P.S. Please be sure to remove every sign plastered all over my county courthouse that announces Paul Chamberlain's unapproved policy law. Thanks.